Wow. There is Shaoru going to get Twisted Fate in that mid lane. Did a pretty good Twisted Fate before. Was usually stronger in Katarina, but it's very strong in Twisted Fate. I don't, I don't know. I feel like Cesaro is better with... with well, assassin, actually, he right? plays everything. No. I was going to well, say with... Adam but I mean, Zee, Oriana was available. Yeah. And that's one of his strong champions. Yeah. And now we see Listen, probably for Horo in jungle, and a Syra. Super Syra, most likely, we will see. And now, Bottle is probably going to pick Sona for uh, Libic. Or even Blitzpen. Nah, I guess it's going to be Sona. And in jungle, going to be again probably our Skarner or Yudir mm -hmm. for Mokate. Well, as long as Udir is open and he will, Mokate... He, he will wait for the AD. One for of the sure. things that mm. uh, surprised me over the adjustment of the Korean scene that they've had, how they've adapted to the Western world, because in the Korean scene, Nunu is barely ever banned because they just think he's a worthless support down that bottom lane. I guess they're so finally starting to see the, the effects of Blood Boil on yeah, uh, the champions. Actually, we have to talk about Makler best ADs. We saw Bane mm -hmm. and we saw Sona. And what is the best support? Oh, sorry, Sona. Bane and we saw Kokmao. Mm -hmm. And the best support for both champions is Nunu. Is Nunu. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. here there is Bane again. Bane. He doesn't care. He Mac goes to the Wow! I love that. Oh, no, Reaper. I don't love that. Oh, Reaper. Oh, I guess Freak will be f happy with this team all pick. It is it's a Wukong Wukong. Lock on Top but lane. Wukong. And we did see uh, Lee yesterday in our Aram on a Wukong. That was yeah, pretty good. It's, it's not something that's a highlight reel. Um, no, oh, there were a couple it, of It works out well if everybody wants to dive with me, but everybody is like, nah, heard, I'm not going to go in. I heard you died like 20 times or 25 <laughs> times. I did not. I think you'll find I had a 21-125 against Snoopy and Yellow Pete in an Aram. So thank you very much. That was Zeke's though. Doesn't <laughs> yeah, count. It was Zeke's. And there you go, the Yudir junglers we predict and all of top. Probably the best pick for Kubon as well as Darius. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been talking with Fnatic and, and we end up with Olaf and Darius are two picks that even if the laning phase doesn't go that good, it doesn't matter. Still have an impact. Because in mid and late game, you have really huge impact on the calories. It's really strong picks. And finally, the 80s MF. They just want to stomp the bottom lane with that Syra MF. is really strong bottom lane. If just Syra get a single E, it's almost a, a, a kill for MF with the damage. I think that the thing that we need to talk about before we run out of time though is Reaper, we said, is going mm -hmm. to be the man who should try to carry this thing. It's usually the spear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. can yeah. you Wukon carry it? Wukon, yeah, of you course. can. Wukon is one of the highest damage as Bruiser. He's one of the highest damage at top lane. And also I want to point on one thing we didn't talk about is the TF Summoner spells. There is a teleport. He could still swap it out last oh, wow. second. Yeah. But that would be interesting. That's a lot teleport. of mobility. He's going to go teleport. It's exactly what Demon said. It's a lot of mobility. He can be everywhere. You can expect teleport, or you can even expect TF ultimate. So he's wow. going to have a lot of mobility. And I know this team has huge, massive of team play. So what do we expect? Amazing, crazy stuff from me. So who do you think is going to take this one then? I love Mim setup. Me too. But I'm gonna say meet your makers. So meet your that makers. TF teleport, love it. A strong double vote for meet your makers. Anything you think in level one fight we lead? We see meet your makers always going for that level one fight. Is it gonna happen? Level one is is equal, but I will say it's better for Mim. They have uh, Yudi, probably uh, beer stand. They have TF and they have uh, Olaf, who is really strong with the axe. But I have to say, uh, we were talking about this. Uh, top lane is probably gonna be Wukong. Mid is gonna be TF. But bottom is going to be for SK Telecom. Huge. Well, MF ladies and gentlemen, the game is underway. You can see them on your screen. They are under action. Let's get over to Joe and Jason to see how it plays out. So here we go then, our first game of our second semi-final, Meet Your Makers versus SK Telecom T1. And right off the bat, we see there Mokata gain an early position up in that curve. Which actually, Olaf headed up towards the position of you and me. Obviously, the AD carry on misfortune here for SK Telecom. And they are going to be spotting each other's position. But down on the bottom side of the jungle, and Ward already put down there. Up by the race, so they're gonna have decent vision on that side. Mackler and Libic actually were watching down in the tri bush early on for uh, any action that might kick off. And I'm wondering if they're actually gonna end up switching lanes out here again. Misfortune is at the top, so that indicates that SK Telecom want to go for that. And I wonder if Vayne then will head to this top side with Sona. 
Yeah, not too used to seeing Miss Fortune, period, but seeing her in that top lane, giving a lot of pressure to this Olaf, but gonna be loving that undertow. We know Olaf is a very strong 1v2 laner, uh, mostly when he gets that blue buff with the spamming in the undertow, but Joe, I mean, who thinks to take this game? And I want to say Livic on Stone again, when we saw them versus CLGU, and we see Mackler on Vayne yet again. Yeah, we, you know, all the focus gets put on the AD carry, to be honest, from uh, pretty much everyone out there. But yesterday, Libic with Sona was absolutely insane. The crescendos that we saw were perfect the entire time. Yeah. We didn't see him put one down that didn't really mean too much. So uh, that's going to be a big thing from them in this game. We can see that the Wolves have been started off here by MYM. Makata going as usual. Phoenix stands in the jungle. And we will see Makla and Levick going into this top lane, just as I thought. Oh, Reaper's actually still up towards the top lane right now. Kind of an interesting move on their part. I know he did play it a lot in the qualifiers. It was on the Season 3 patch, though. Um, but he's very good as Wukong. Actually, it looks like he might be even heady mid. Yeah, they're setting card this bottom, Joe. Miley's going to be down there one, uh, one v 2 ing Actually, no, no, 1v1-ing because Olaf is heading down there as well. But we're going to have Wukong versus Twist of Fate in the mid lane. And that was a matchup the uh, experts test wasn't really expecting. Oh, Miley really actually going very, very low there uh, from that blue buff pickup. But as you said, that indicates that he will probably be in that bottom lane uh, from this one as well. And Twisted Fate versus Wukong. Can't really say that I've got much experience with watching Twisted Fate versus Wukong, that's for sure. Uh, but this top lane gonna be hard as we see already the roots landing onto Makla. The Ignite was used and Lee Sin is now coming around the back. He's got the red buff on. Is his first blood? Yes, it is. He's gonna be picked up by you and me. A great start for SK Telecom. You can see Horo went very, very low, but very, very low is not dead. And that will be an important start here for SKT. You can see that Charu having some real problems with Wukong in the middle early on as well. Yeah, yes. I'm trying to figure out how to switch the scoreboard to really accommodate for this. I mean, I'm really having a hard time there. Obviously, Will, since it's a you know a bruiser in the mid lane against an AP carry, we're seeing that a lot in season three. I know Froggen loves to play um, that Jarvan in the mid lane or even Lee Sin. So he's gonna have, he's on a tough time. But one thing we need to mention, he's running teleport on a TF Joe. All the more movement around <laughs> the map, especially since you get that then before level six, obviously. Uh, and then once he gets into level six, well, he's got two reasons to be moving around the map. So uh, we'll see how that all works out here for Charu. As you can see, Reaper already has the uh, level advantage on him there. Misfortune just gone back, picking up Doran's blade and three pots. As we are seeing Makata coming around now into this middle lane, Reaper will just dive over to him and will be safe from that one. And that's the thing about Wukong as well. He's He's pretty slippy. I mean, he's not Lee Sin slippy, but with that decoy uh, and with his E as well, he's pretty hard to lock down. Yeah, but the one thing that Mitch Makers has in their advantage, when TF pops that ultimate, they will be able to see him if he does use that decoy, and they could easily pick up a kill. They did uh, try to gank it before he got it up, but he is level 4 now, obviously going to have it. And we have Horo visiting the top lane yet again. I don't believe he's actually spotted by War, but pings are going down for him. Libic is hanging around here, and we are going to see him try to get in there. The root actually missed, so that could throw uh, this push off. But you can see uh, the damage that Makla takes just from that. As uh, the Q will land in on towards Libic. This is going to be decent damage. Nice condemn onto Haro there, forcing him against uh, the wall, stuns him up. And that should be the end of that trouble. Wukong actually uh, just going up for the rates there as well. Is going to be coming back into lane 23 um, to 22 CS in this mid lane. Like you said, it's pretty hard to balance the scoreboard around for this one. As Makata is coming in, they're going to get the stun down now onto Reaper after he uses that decoy. Can they finish him off? Flash comes in. Charu going to pick up the kill. And Makata once again showing just how good he is with this Udia in the jungle. Yeah, very well timed right there. They waited for that decoy to disappear. And the flash is coming at Charo, the CC they have is amazing. And Joe, we should probably talk about this, uh, well, this quote-unquote bot lane a little bit. I mean, we have Karthus uh, versus uh, Olaf here. And Miley still with that blue buff right now. He's sitting at 24 CS to 20. So Cubone, he's holding in. He has a couple of health pots going for that Fairy's Charm. We'll build into that uh, that Philo Stone eventually. But Mackler, I mean, we saw him yesterday. I saw him, you just switched the uh, camera on me. But uh, Mackler, we Sorry. saw him yesterday. Um, he played an amazing vein. There's no, uh, that's an understatement, if anything. But he's being shut out right now. In each, or in the game you played, Vayne, he had a very good start. Yeah, he had that very good start, which they probably need to uh, try and figure out here as well to try and get that Udia into this top lane. Libic probably will have to play a bit more aggressively as well without getting caught out um, in this lane if he wants to keep Makla safe. Obviously, he do have that sustain with the heal coming out of Libic, but the damage from Misfortune early on, yeah. especially combined with uh, the root from Zyra and the plants on top of it, that's going to make it really hard to you know heal Makla through everything that comes in. 
And yeah, there's a huge CS difference on top of that. 37 for Misfortune to the 19 for Vayne. Gonna have a tough time, but I mean, Misfortune is one of those champions that's very strong early on. Vayne, easy, will outscale her late game. But the thing that uh, SK Telecom has in their favor is the, the AoE of their team. I mean, they have Wukong to knock everyone up. They have Zyra to knock everyone up. They even have a wall pain to slow them. They have the E out of Lee to slow them. And then the uh, Misfortune ultimate on top of that. So Mitra Makers have to get a little bit tanky and avoid uh, the CC chain that uh, SK Telecom can put out. But... Still, I mean, we have about one kill for Char in the mid lane, going for the sword boots, getting that extra movement speed against uh, Reaper. And he went for that Doran's blade himself. His bottom lane, Kubon, 40 CS to the 29 of Mightily's Carthus. So, uh, really doing a nice little job is there, uh, Kubon. But again, this bottom lane is going to be where it's all at as the root will land onto Makla, but Starlast going a little bit too low to uh, really get involved with that one. However, Horo is coming back towards his top side of the map, currently doing the Golems as Karthus takes uh, the expected damage there uh, from Kubon in the bottom. He's actually got three points in the uh, Reckless Swing, so uh, leveling his E up first here. As Makata now going to come in towards that middle area, can't really take Reaper on 1v1, that's for sure, uh, as we again see just the pure damage that can come out of misfortune. Oh no, Reaper, he's actually coming out towards the top and he is spotted. Kings are going down. You do see Mikati heading up there as well, trying to stop him, but he goes, Reaper goes back to lane. And that, I mean, that's the thing. They're trying to focus down Mackley. They know how well he played yesterday on pretty much all of his 80 carries, his Corky, yeah. his Vayne, and uh, his Kog'Maw. There we go. I was trying to figure out the last one. Um, so Shredder Down could do very well, but I mean, TF is six. Haven't seen a teleport out of him. Seven, haven't seen an ultimate out of him just yet. And uh, actually, it looks like he will potentially be heading over there as he could pick up his blue buff. And head back to lane. We do have boots mobility done on Lee Sin, so he's trying to run around as much as possible and provide these ganks. And at the bottom lane, I'm surprised at how, uh, how well Cubone's actually doing. I mean, Mylena has that range to actually farm. He has that range to harass as much as possible. Oh, Twisted Fealty coming into this top lane. Starlast actually going to get away from this one, possibly. They need one more hit from Makla or from Charu there. That final card doing the business for them. And that will be a nice kill coming over. Twisted Fate now 2-0. to zero. Vayne obviously picks up the assist for that one as well. Uh, and I'm... You said you're surprised in this bottom lane that Kubon's doing too well. I'm not really. I mean, as an Olaf, you can be very aggressive onto a Karthus. Like, it's very hard for him to uh, really stop you coming in, throwing that reckless swing down, getting the axe onto you, and then backing away countless times. Um, so, you know, in their 62 CS to the 48 of Karthus, I'm um, keeping the scoreboard line up like this because, well, it's their respective roles at the end of the day. Maybe not quite which lanes they're in because then we'll have a real trouble keeping that scoreboard updated. Uh, but 67 on all after the 57 on Wukong, 49 on Chara with the two kills to the 48 with Mightily on Karthus. So, uh, now, looking really good on that front for Meet Your Makers. The other side of it, though, obviously they have lost Vayne once, dying uh, early on. Misfortune picking up that kill now has a BF sword to bring into this top lane, as if she wasn't already hurting enough, and also has a 62 to 36 CS lead. And yeah, that's really hard to go up against. I mean, with the CC, like we mentioned before, out of SK Telecom to lock oh, Mackler down. Running that hill. Oh, it's not going to be good for him. He does have flash and exhaust available, but Makati backing away as Reaper's going to spot him here. Yeah, Reaper is going to spot him. Actually pops the decoy off there. He's going to go dancing in and actually will pop the ultimate here onto Makata. Lee Sin coming oh. around as well. A Q not quite landing, but the W will get him in position anyway. And Reaper will pick up that kill onto Makata. And that was a great turnaround. Not sure if they really spotted that he was there, uh, but we are seeing now Charu headed up to this top side of the map. Obviously does have his ultimate available. Use the teleport for that last one and we are now going to see Twisted Fate coming in for this one. There's a brilliant crescendo as well. They've lost Makler but they should be able to take you and me but they forgot about the Karthus. Charu not quite going to be finished off by it. Oh, a no. heal coming out of Livic Health Top but we've got Wukong coming around the side. Can he get in? Charu is actually going to be recalling. Uses a decoy in the bush. There is the Wukong and shut down. Three kills lined up there, and they're going to dive in on towards Lippic as well. They got the root. Starlast tanking the turret up. This is another one, a double kill for Reaper. He'll escape from the turret damage as well. And SK Telecom looking very, very good. That was a nice trade there again. Three kills for zero. We see Reaper now three and one. He died early on. Seeing the bombing Cubon just trying to harass Miley. And that, like you're saying, he has the ability to stick to him as much as possible with his undertoes. But Reaper looking very strong now. Has that brutalizer. This going to be causing a lot of problems for Charu. So you see Horo and uh, Makati going head-to-head -head in that middle lane. And Horo just going to back out instead. But, uh, you know, Lee Sin here he hasn't been too impactful after that uh, first initial gank in that top lane we saw. And yet, I mean, 
Still farming well, has his boost ability still going into his Wriggles. And Akade, I mean, uh, I want to say if we saw an Oracle out of him, a little bit of an early Oracle, he could have ganked. I uh, reaped quite a bit more in the middle lane, but obviously he knows what he's doing a lot better than I am. Dragon still is up right now, 11 minutes in, hasn't been taken once yet. And Joe, I mean, we know how strong Olaf is with an advantage, but he's rocking 2 GP10 and almost a 30 CS uh, lead. Exactly. I mean, he's only <laughs> getting stronger from this point on. Uh, if you look at the gold, uh, 3,100 to 3,600, obviously with three kills in there. As Reaper is going to come down into this bottom lane. Will use a decoy to get himself uh, back off there and stay safe. But Lee Sin is coming down. That ward will have spotted him. And Kuban should be safe from that one. Yep, he's just going to back away. I think the real worry is this misfortune and how they're just demolishing Vayne uh, up until this point. I mean, Vayne 0 2 2 um, compared to the 2 1 1. The CS is not on his side. It's Kuban now going to be in trouble. But in comes Makata. Actually got knocked up there in the end. But the stun will go down. Reaper does manage to take down Olaf. But well, he's going to get shot down now by Twisted Fate, who returns the favor for ending that killing spree early on. And now it looks like Meteor Makers may try for a turret. They've not really got the minions there, though. That's a problem. Yeah, and they do have Horror defending it as well. And they could have actually went for a Dragon off of that, but still going to be pushing that bottom tower. We're going to get it pretty low here. But whether or not they're actually going to get it down is the real question. We did have a lane switch, by the way, uh, as you were noticing. Reaper was at the bottom lane, and we did see Miley head towards mid. Miley actually going for a gank on this top lane. And if they catch Mackler yet again, this will be devastating. It looks like they might even be able to. That's, oh, oh, nice there it is. tumble away. Dodging that wall of pain, but that's going to mean a turret here. SK Telecom realizing that they're going to lose their outer turret in the bottom lane. So they need to reply to that one with taking one of their own in this top lane. And that will leave us with 17.3 to 16.8 thousand gold. Pretty close on that front. Uh, but when you look over to Meteor Makers, all the kills stacked up here on Twisted Fate. Yeah, we always talk about that spread. Actually, we're going to see a dragon coming out of SK Telecom very shortly. We see her with that pink orb. We see the AD carry backing out. And there's no reason for them to not go for it. But yeah, I mean, the, that's four kills on TF. And Joe, we've seen time and time again, I mean, you can stack as many kills as you want on Twisted Fate, but you need kills on other per, uh, other targets. You need kills on a vein, uh, especially, um, since Twisted Fate will obviously uh, kind of fade off late game. There is that pink ward going down. Horror going to clear out the ward for Mutri Makers. And they have all five members in the vicinity. Mac in the top lane right now, and there's nothing they could do um, to actually stop this. Unless they're potentially going to go for a steal here. Well, we are going to see them going in there. Makata is going to come around, but they do disengage. There comes the crescendo. Makata going very, very low. Kuban not super healthy either, but he's trying to stick to Miss Fortune. Doesn't quite get the kill. And they're going to lose Olaf. Not quite take out you and me. Libic is still off the other side, but obviously he's not going to be able to do anything. This dragon is going to go over to SK Telecom. Plus that kill. Great bit of play from the Koreans. Yep, now they have that 1500 gold lead. And I mean, the kill stack currently for SK Telecom. Four on uh, Wukong, four, or three on Misfortune. That couldn't really be any better. Obviously, you want to see Karthus with a little more. Going for that Rod of Aegis. Needs to be able to stand up against this brute force that uh, Beach Makers has. But still, I mean, he's, he's still in the game. Even though he was bot lane against Olaf, he's not down so much CS anymore. He's sitting there at 83 at the moment. And compared to his counterpart, 87 overall, not, uh, not far behind at all. Yeah, and now Reaper in this top lane. Could probably hammer Mackler as well while uh, yeah. his Libic's not there, but we are going to see Twisted Fate coming in. Here's the stun card pulled as well. They actually managed to get it down. Reaper trying to get away, but Vayne is onto him with the ulti. A great condemn against the wall. Reaper tries to turn it round, but it's not going to be quite enough there to stop Mackler. Uh, oh, actually, it was Libic that picked up the kill in the end. That wasn't ideal either. Uh, but Meet Your Makers may just have their second turret of the game away with this one. Starlash just getting hit by the wild cards, and oh, Lee Sin and careful. Karthus are both coming up here. Lee Sin's Q will literally go through all three of them and connect with none. And that will be Meet Your Makers walking away from that one safe. And look at the goal. Bang even on 20.8-ish. Changes. <laughs> uh, I love that. Uh, I love that word. But still, I mean, we see Mackler right now. Two Dorn's blades, Berserker boot, uh, Berserker Greaves compared to his counterpart, Bloodthirster Joe. I mean, it's just that right there. He doesn't need any boots on top of that. Um, that sustain is going to be very, very good for you and me. And there really isn't much Mackler can do. We did see a great play out of him in that top end with that condemn, but it might not be enough. Char might even get caught here and does, in fact, get hit with the Q of Horo. Oh, Horror gonna flash behind him, kicks him back out towards Carthus. This is dangerous signs for Charo. The second Q landing here from Horror. We could follow him over there. No, oh, misfortune also not quite enough to finish off. And he will, I say, walk away from that one. He was <laughs> pretty he uh, away from that tooth one. Tooth and nail stuff, but he did get away from it. That's the uh, important part from Charo's side. Actually, uh, picking up that Negatron cloak now. 
We do see Rada Ages actually completed for Mightily now. And I wouldn't be too surprised to see SK Telecom actually start grouping up for some team fighting because they have such a great composition for it. They are really far ahead with their AD carry and with their mid lane. And still, just four kills uh, sitting on Char right now and the one on Livic, like we saw on the top lane. Obviously not the ideal person, but still, you'll take it anyways. And he has a heart of gold and boots mobility. However, Livic hasn't really been roaming around too much. Oh, Reaper's gonna sneak in here. Yeah, not quite and sneaky nowhere. enough though. <laughs> Decoy needed to last about 300% longer. They are starting to push down towards this story. I mean, they've got all five there, SK Telecom. And in terms of a diving team, it's not half bad. I mean, if they can get that Wukong in there and knock them up, that's an easy Zyra ultimate then. Yep. Yeah, the danger is now you've got the stuns out of out of Libic with Crescendo. Makata is in there. You've got Twisted Fate who can stun you as well. So not really the easiest team to keep under control. But either way. Meet your makers have now managed to gain a gold lead, and that's just from farming, basically, in these uh, in this last minute or so. Well, both teams stacked up. Horo's actually gone into this top lane to stop that one pushing out too far. It's Reaper Dwell again, decoy back on towards his turret. I mean, that turret is also, though, 445 HP remaining on the SK Telecom middle outer turret. Dragon will be coming up 1944, so still a bit of time until that one comes into play. I mean, you makers may just want to go for this middle turret after all, you know, just stick around. I mean, Twisted Fate has backed away, but at the end of the day, he's Twisted Fate and he can come straight back into that fight. He's got Teleport and his ultimate available. So he could even come in and go out again if he needs to. <laughs> yeah, Reaper heading down towards this bot lane just to stop this push. And by the way, if you guys are wondering, he's actually living up his E, his Nimbus Strike, not going for his Q. I know a lot of people at home don't really see too many competitive. That is a dead here. Uh, yes. <laughs> Fulti not going to save you from that one, I'm afraid. Uh, but again, great play, and that's the danger of the decoy. You think that you're safe, but all of a sudden, a monkey appears right before your eyes, uh, and you're in a lot of trouble. As we are seeing them chasing down Kubon here. Ultimate was pop leaving now in a bit of trouble. Puts a nice crescendo down. Ultimate coming out of Carthus. Will it be enough again? Libic managing to heal through that one, but Lee Sin going right through, he gets the one kill, but dies himself afterwards, and now Kubon, the one that's in trouble, SK trying to push through, and Makla now being chased down by you and me. Oh, oh the double oh. actually landing onto Sona, and Sona's like, my god, scumbag. <laughs> you walk towards me, and I end up dying. Uh, but that was going to open this middle sorry, up now for SK Telecom, and that will be the first middle out turret of the game. And as well as the bot turret too, so they're going to pick up two turrets here. Get a nice uh, gold advantage, or they're going to get their gold advantage back. And still, I mean, SK Telecom, as you saw right there, Reaper just pretty much 1v1 Charu. There's nothing Charu could do about it. And then in that fight, they're just so strong right now. They're just so fed at the moment that they can just take the front, uh, up front damage Beatrix has to offer and then put even more back at him. Do a 1600 gold currently sit on Reaper as he is backing out right now. A thousand on Karthus and a thousand on Zyra. So we're going to see a couple of items being built up here. Sword boots for Karthus currently. And Wukong going to pick up a B of sword because why not, Joe? Because he can. <laughs> 5 3 0 currently brutalizing that Hex Drinker already in there for him. And for the AD, carries well. Misfortune, obviously, 4 1 2. Big CS lead as well is in a prime position uh, at this stage of the game. Bloodthirster and Zeal finish the, alongside the Berserker Greaves, Doran's Blade, and a Longsword compared to, well, a Zeal, the Crit Cloak. And, well, not a lot much more to talk about there. There's double Doran's Blade, but uh, you and me, definitely the stronger of the two there. And we saw just how uh, devastated he can be in that last fight, taking down the uh, support, albeit. Got a little bit of luck in the end, <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> not going to uh, say anything bad about that one. You need a little bit of luck on your way to victory as well. But Meet Your Makers now are going to be looking for this outer turret in the middle lane. The Dragon was taken by SK Telecom, and here comes Reaper again. He's going to get the knockup. Where's the Zyra ultimate? Not quite in there just yet as the plants come down as well. SK Telecom losing a couple of members here. Kubon manages to pick one up mightily. Going low. Kubon, though, is stood right inside of the defile, and mightily still manages to stay alive. And that is going to be kills coming over again for SK Telecom. The rest of Mini Makers having to back away. 
But it was a two for two. Who did they lose? They lost Charu, they lost Kubon, and they took out Reaper and Mightily. So, uh, well, it was a fair trade uh, in that situation as well. Yep, it looks like they are going to push down this mid turret. Get that one down as well. We just see Warmog's complete for Kubon, and in that last little fight, actually saw Horo kick Mackler back over that wall. Still great micro out of him, which we saw all day yesterday. Fednets are completed for him. And I mean, this is the point where Mitra Makers can start to make an e a really easy comeback with this. Uh, Olaf is really tanky, and uh, they don't really have, I and mean, they have a lot of damage on SK Telecom, but against an Olaf with his ultimate pop, who so can just run right in your face and force the AD carry to back off, is going to cause him a lot of problems. Mackler are going to get the items he needs to get back in the game very shortly. We do see Red Buff going over to you and me, and he's playing very exceptional this game. Five and one, Bloodthirster, and a Zeal on top of that. Yeah. He's going to be hurt or if he's not already. Uh, but he must be signing a good chunk. Yeah, 1,700 gold currently for you and me. Also has a longsword, Joe. So he could see a phage. Could see a brutalizer into a black cleaver. Obviously not the, the black cleaver we're all used to now with season three, but still. <laughs> nonetheless, we'll be able to uh, work very well for her. And we do have that penetration build done on Charu now. Which is really a big deal. He is their magic damage. And he should be doing true damage to Misfortune. Uh, most likely to Reaper. Uh, well, not full true damage to him, but a good portion of it. And as well as Karthus, who still sitting on that Rod of Ages, getting pretty tanky for his team. As we saw in that last fight, he just sat in the middle of all of them, let his uh, Defile do all the damage, not to mention the Lay Waste. Ended up dying, but still doing a lot of damage in the end. Yeah, he's supposed to die anyway. He's Karthus. Yeah. He's supposed to be right in the middle of him and a prime target to be taken down. Um, but he is currently 115, 133 to 137 CS. So technically behind Twisted Fate here, not to mention those big kill advantage that Charu does have. Are we going to see a fight kicking off here? As the Q from Lee Sin will actually land there on Living. Meanwhile, in the middle, Makla thought Lee Sin was going to go aggressive onto him. In the end, decided against that one. And Charo just popped his ultimate to see where everyone was, but he's not going to go anyway. He's going home. <laughs> he's going somewhere. Going just home, home. Um, But yeah, we do have an Oracle uh, currently on Starless. Been on for quite a while, and Libic ended up picking one up for himself. And it looks like both teams, I mean, we're 23 minutes in. They're trying to make some moves towards Baron here, but I don't think neither team can really take it up front. Not to mention if a team is hammering away from behind in that pit. But still, SK Telecom, they're still grouped up in this mid lane. They're still trying to make a play here. And I mean, they still have two more out of to take if they want in that top and bottom lane. But still, Makati all alone here to defend with Mackler, and they need to they need to get back ASAP. If Cuban doesn't get back and Charo, then they're going to lose this inhibitor turret. And we've got Reaper that just came through the jungle, I think, trying to catch anyone out in that sense. But they are going to be focusing down this inhibitor turret, and it is gone. There's no way that they're going to save that one. Will they be able to save the inhibitor itself, though? Not too sure as the wall of pain does go down. It's going to make Carter's damage that bit more awesome as Reaper is going to dive in there. The support does go down. Reaper falling very low, but he'll go to the back of this fight. Makla is still alive. He could be a big factor in this one as Kubon trying to run away. Makla does die. Charu now going to be locked down as well. And that is Haru to, uh, Haru to take down Charu. And that is the inhibitor taken. What are SK Telecom going to do? To be honest, they've got 14 seconds for Libic, 30 and 25 seconds for the AD and AP carry. And they may just do what we saw from CJ Enters yesterday, and that is ignore the other lanes and just push straight through the middle here for the victories. They focused out on towards Kubon Reaper. And look how much health he's got. 20 health or so he manages to survive. There comes the crescendo out. Can they kill mightily? Yes, he will eventually die, but they are going out the Nexus. The spawn's coming in in two seconds for Makla. This actually could go a little bit wrong for SK Telecom, but they're still hitting it, and they are going to take down the Nexus and win game number one here at Intel Extreme Masters Cologne, taking out Media Makers. But it is a best of three, but an impressive performance nonetheless from the Korean side. That was a very fast game, Joe. 24 minutes, like you just said, 24-34. Yeah. And uh, it all took us one team fight, just like we're saying, with the whole composition they're running. They have the knockup from Wukong, they followed it up with the Zyra. They just blew up the enemy team as much as possible. And yeah, I mean, what else is to say? Very well played.